Ragna and I'm just doing the introduction. And then afterwards, I will give the word to Aita Fernandez from Future Space, who will be doing the presentation on uh, AI for organizational decision making. And then in, in the end of the webinar, uh, we are interested in hearing your opinions and doing some polls. Uh, so we'll have uh, 15 minutes where I, my project colleague, Agusti from Smart Tech Cluster, will uh, facilitate that session. Um, and just so you know why we are having this webinar, it's uh, part of the Excel Living project um, where we are five clusters, European clusters, doing a project that focuses on habitats uh, in a cross sectoral dimension. So it's home automation, welfare technology, lighting, furniture, building con construction and etc. And what we are doing in this training program is to offer a webinar series addressed to SMEs, but also other cluster members who, who might be interested. And we want to increase your competitiveness, your internationalization opportunities, uh, and essentially en enhance a smarter, more age-friendly and greener habitat value chain. Um, so we have done a lot of uh, different webinars uh, within the topic of digitalization, advanced technologies, sustainability and internationalization. And one last thing before I will be giving the word to, to Aita, I just want to tell you about the Excel Living Help Desk, uh, which is a platform that we have made in the project. And this is also where you will find the, the presentation and the recording of the webinar afterwards. And furthermore, you will have access to a, a team of advisors. If you have any questions within this area, you're welcome to, to ask them in the, in the Help Desk. And also you'll be able to connect with other people who are interested in the same same area as you. So, so do uh, check it, check it out and it's for free to, to make an account on the help desk. And now I would like to welcome Aita Fernandez, who is a business development manager in uh, Future Space. Um, and um, Aita has worked within AI and digitalization since 2017 uh, as a data scientist and also as now a business development manager. And he is helping clients in different sectors uh, take advantage of AI in their business processes. And um, now he will hopefully uh, be able to, to learn us more about AI. So I will just stop sharing my screen and then now you're welcome to, to share your screen, Aita. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lana, for your words and thank you all for, for coming. I hope we make an interesting presentation and that it helps you. So give me one second. OK, I think now you can see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So, uh, well, let's let's begin. Uh, as Nana said, now this presentation is going to focus on uh, a little bit about um, what's AI and then how can we use it uh, to for decision making. At, at the end, AI, we need to see it as a it's a tool. Uh, it's it's come. It's already here, but it's coming really, really strong now. As we've been seeing the last past month, that there's been a lot of news about a lot of uh, developments, and we we really need to use uh, to to start using it, uh, so we can be more competitive and, and optimize our our workflow and everything. So here are a few tips about how to how to use it. And as uh, Nana said, at the end we have a Q and A part. So if you have any questions, uh, we can discuss. Uh, we can discuss later. Okay. So let me see the the index. So first we're going to see an introduction, a little bit about uh, us, uh, the why we are <laughs> we are giving this this webinar. Then a few basic things about AI. Uh, the basics, no? What's AI? Uh, how can we use it? Applications and uh, tools that we already have. Uh, sometimes we are already using it, and, and we really don't don't know because it's embedded in our in some applications that we use in our daily basis. Um, AI in decision making. Uh, here we will focus in how can we extract all the value from AI uh, in order to 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 make better decisions, no? Or, or to use it to to assist that uh, as uh, as we make our decisions. Uh, in our work, in our daily basis, and in, in everything that we can put our money into. And then we will see industry applications because sometimes what we see is, um, OK, maybe I know a lot about technology and about AI, but I have no idea about your businesses. So maybe for you is the, the same. You know a lot about your businesses, but AI is really far from your um, uh, knowledge. So with this type of session, what we try to do is uh, getting AI closer to you because at the end, you you are the ones that have the, the ideas or you know what happens in your business. So it helps us a lot to 
to have this little conversation now for you to see uh, what we can do with uh, with AI. Uh, then we will see a few slides, uh, a couple of slides of how can you get started with with AI. Uh, one approach is more is more simple, no, and the other is more uh, I want to do it myself. I, I want to learn, or I want to have a team inside my company doing it. Uh, we will see it there, and then a few uh, another slide more focus on ethical and legal aspects. Uh, AI is being regulated um, right now, and well, it's been uh, it's been regulated for a few maybe months, years, but not like now. Like now, with all the news that has been popping about ChatGPT and other uh, large language models and and another uh, all all types of uh, AIs. Uh, now, uh, really, governments and the European Union is started to to see. Um, Hard to make harder regulation, so we need to have that in mind when we build our models and when we uh, work with AI. So we have a little bit of a session there we, that we can also discuss about. So first, uh, a little bit about ourselves, uh, Future Space. Uh, we are a technological company. Uh, we were born like more than 25 years ago here in, in Spain. And we focus on, on technology. Um, the last years, we've been focused mainly on, on data. So here we can work with different type of data, uh, big data and AI, no? which is uh, what we are going to do today. Uh, intelligence data, uh, data from open sources, from social networks, from uh, webs, from everywhere that we can uh, extract and analyze. Uh, we also work with data from uh, mo uh, from phones, and we also have some applications there for, for our clients that we can work on. And in IoT and in Industry uh, 4.0, uh, we are also working with some industries, uh, creating models for them, optimizing logistics, and doing a lot of things with, with, with data, basically. No? We, we are a data-driven company, and, and we want our clients to be also data-driven so they can extract all the value that they can from for their data. Okay, just a, a bit of introduction. Uh, and now we pass to, to trends and market opportunities. So why is AI important? Uh, well, AI is helping a lot of businesses. It, it's doing a lot of things. In the recent years, um, free software is growing a lot. Uh, open source projects, uh, the community in AI is really, really open. And we are seeing a, a, a really a, an increase in, in growth here. Uh, this is helping a, a lot to advance the, the, the AI uh, movement now. And, and the growth that we are seeing is that uh, the global AI market is estimated to grow at a rate of uh, 38%, uh, which is huge. No, uh, the, the number for from last year, it's around 120 billion, the, the, the global market uh, that represented AI, but it's estimated to grow up to uh, 1,597 billion for 2028. So it's it's a lot. Uh, it's moving a, a lot of money right now, and, and it's some it's it's not just a trend so it's something that it's a new tool that it's happening and and we really need to 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 take advantage for, uh, of of that tool of that new tool that we have um so how how many businesses now are, are using it right now so the estimates is around 91.5 percent of of companies uh, at a global level are using ai at some point no but only 15 percent use it in a daily basis uh, I think this number could be bigger because, for example, the spam filter that we all have in our email, it uses AI to filter emails. Uh, then we use um, Google for our searches, um, Google Maps to move from one place to another. Uh, we're using social networks, uh, LinkedIn, so, um, in, um, Instagram, Facebook, all that, and they all have um, uh, AI embedded on them. Uh, Amazon, for example, for uh, for the product recommendations and all kinds of, of uh, online stores and web pages and everything. So uh, it's really everywhere. So sometimes it's not so easy to, to see it because not uh, we are using AI for this, but uh, it's it's really everywhere. No, and with this session, we want to see that uh, we want you to see that it can also be applied to uh, small businesses, medium businesses, uh, big businesses. It, it can go everywhere if you really uh, can see the use. Uh, it can optimize a lot the the workflow. So a little bit about the basic note, uh, what is AI? Uh, so this is the definition from uh, John McCarthy. He, he is the, the MIT uh, lab founder, and he put it like this. Now, artificial intelligence is the science and engineering of making intelligent machine, especially intelligent computer programs. It is, a re it is related to the similar task of using computers to understand human intelligence, uh, but AI need not to be confined to biological observable methods. So 
what does this mean? But at the end, artificial intelligence is just a system that mimics human thought and actions. So we want to do something that a repetitive task that for us is something that we, we are doing every day or uh, we do it a lot and it can be automized uh, using AI. That would be a great opportunity to use AI. It's not just automation, but going a little bit further, like detecting patterns, for example. AI is really good at this. So if we want, for example, to classify fraud between in our um, in our company. Uh, we can use uh, AI there for sure. If we want to understand anomaly detection for our uh, factory, for example, AI is really good at that because it can detect patterns really, really well. And we can use it for for in our advantage there. No, uh, we were talking with some um, with some business. Uh, I think last month uh, they were working in the um, shipping industry in, in in boats. And most of the times when they have a problem in the in the boat, what they do is uh, they just go to the not not touching the engine, but uh, something near the engine. No, they put their hands, and depending on how it vibrates, they know what's going on in there. Or maybe they just listen and they say, okay, this noise uh, implies that uh, this pump is not working well, so we need to change it. All that is human knowledge that uh, it can be automated by by by, uh, by an AI because at the end we are uh, what we do is we learn those patterns as humans, so we can teach AI to do that. And with this, and we don't we don't want to to take that job out of that person. We just want an assistant. So what we are trying to do is, OK, maybe um, today you're not having a, a good day, for example, or maybe something happened and uh, you don't detect it as well. So AI doesn't have those problems and it can assist you. It can tell you, I think the problem is this. And then you as a human actor, you take the decision. So it will help you take decisions. It will not replace the decision. Replacing the decision, it's uh, we are not there yet, uh, and 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 it's much more difficult because it's giving AI a power that shouldn't be for AI, at least in my opinion. Uh, we as humans need to be the ones taking taking action at the end. No, so uh, this is one case where AI can can help a lot and can assist. Uh, an overview of different AI parts that we can do. For example, uh, maybe you heard about um, some of this. So. If we talk, for example, about uh, all the news that have been uh, appearing now about um, uh, ChatGPT and all these uh, large language models that we've been uh, seeing lately, all this is uh, natural language processing. At the end, we try to teach a computer uh, to know about language. We want to teach it to detect uh, context. We want to teach it about detecting the sentiment of the of the document. Uh, we want to teach the computer to extract entities, for example. Uh, I want to give it a PDF and to extract uh, all the names, for example, or extract uh, the quantities of these uh, invoice, for example. All that uh, can be done with, with AI and it can accelerate a lot the, the processing of documents. For example, if we need to process uh, hundreds of documents every day, uh, with AI it's much more, much more simple uh, at the end. Computer vision, for example, it focuses on trying to teach a computer to, to, to see, no? <laughs> Uh, it will recognize objects. So what we can do with computer vision is, um, for example, one part could be uh, OCRs. Um, those are software, um, computer vision software, no, that can read a PDF, not just um, by uh, by sending an image. So we send an image, and it will digitalize all the text in there, extract the tables, extract the images, extract everything, and just pass it and, and pass it to 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 a document that we can use uh, on our computer, for example, instead of just an image, a picture. We can also use it to recognize uh, objects and faces. Uh, sometimes, for example, um, when you enter, uh, especially during the pandemic, no, for example, uh, when you enter some, some stores, uh, there would be a, um, a monitor saying um, there are 100 persons uh, already in here, for example. Uh, you can do that with AI. It will just count the persons that are coming in and coming out, and then it will tell you the number. Uh, for facial recognition, for example, with our phones, when it detects our face and it unlocks itself, so we are using um, computer vision there. Uh, for videos and, and images also, uh, for example, in, in soccer, it's been used uh, and, and other sports to detect um, the people uh, playing on the field, so it's easier then to, to make statistics about who is um, um, playing better or playing worse, uh, who is sending more the ball to do other um, partners and all that. No, uh, We can do all that with computer vision. Uh, and now it's also um, 
it's also have a really uh, in, uh, great increment in the last uh, in the last I think six months one year it, it uh, gave a huge leap here so there can be a lot of applications here. And in robotics, no. For example, here we can combine AI with uh, physical hardware. So we are taking the artificial intelligence, the software, putting it in something that can uh, move and can interact with the real world. And we can do a lot of things uh, semi-autonomously. No, I think uh, I don't know if you have seen all the these uh, robots for uh, Boston Dynamics, the the, the little dog, uh, well, dog-like uh, machine. And, and the human-like machine that they move and do things. No, uh, for example, all those type of robots can can use artificial intelligence to move. And the thing with this is that you don't really need to teach them to to walk. So what do you do is you create an algorithm that will uh, work with the latest uh, point that we have, reinforcement learning. So you will try to do things. You you tell it uh, you can do all these actions and by repeating itself once and again and again and again, it will learn to do that task. So we can implement this in more things, but for example, in robotics, it's being used like this. It takes much longer than to train a, a, a human, for example, to, to recognize something, but um, it's also working really well for, for all these type of things that you just need to, to increase the computing uh, power uh, and you just let the AI try again and again and again and again. Um, I don't know, another example, for example, could be the uh, chess or the Go games that there was an artificial intelligence uh, that was a few years back that uh, won the, the to the best player, for example. So that's that's a that's a, an algorithm that can use reinforcement learning to learn. So it will just keep playing again and again and again, and it will learn all the patterns. And then when it plays with someone, uh, it it just uh, knows how to react to your uh, actions, for example. Uh, so this is another example of of reinforcement learning. But where can you use it? No, uh, where are we using it already in our uh, in our application? So personal assistant, for example, uh, Siri, Alexa, uh, Google Assistant, uh, they use NLP to understand what we are telling them. Uh, social media, for example, uh, the feed that we receive from social media, the, the one that I receive is different from the one that uh, other people receive because at the end there is an algorithm behind it that will recognize what I like and it will keep feeding me what I like. So that's uh, also a problem of social media, no? Uh, but uh, it, it's something that works in, in social media. Uh, uh, like a few months back, uh, Twitter, for example, released their algorithms for uh, recommending um, um, different tweets to to person no? to, to see what you can see in your Twitter account. So uh, they they opened it and, and released it. So it, it's at the end is AI behind every social network to see to that to to tell you one thing or tell you a different thing, you know, depending on, on what you like, your preferences, what you click, what you don't click, and, and all that. The spam filter, for example, as we said, no, uh, it's also using AI. For smart home devices, for example, uh, there are AI-driven uh, thermostats uh, that just uh, regulate themselves. For the lighting system, if you detect that your pattern is that you arrive at this time and then you go at this time, it will automatically uh, turn on the uh, the heating, for example, uh, just uh, 30 minutes before you arrive first and, and turn on the light the, the five minutes before you enter or something like that. It, it, they work with, with this pattern that, that you use. They learn your patterns and then they implement them themselves. For autonomous vehicles, for example, safe driving cars are using also AI for that. And online shopping recommendation. No? At the end, it's, uh, AI is also behind uh, these algorithms of recommendation. Uh, when you enter a shop and they say, okay, because you bought this, uh, maybe you like this. No, Depending on, on the algorithm, so, some of them are based only on, on your previous purchases and others are based on also people that are like you. No, People that bought similar things uh, to you are buying also these things. So maybe you also like these things. So they work like that and they uh, send you notifications about uh, what you might be liking or when you when you are in the, the web page. Um, now let's focus on on, on decision making. Now, uh, so how can AI help us uh, in our company? Uh, uh, offering support, um, for example, this is one great example. No, as I said before, it can enhance the decision support system. For example, for for doctors now, uh, there are some um, uh, some tests to use uh, ChatGPT like um, algorithms to recommend diagnostics. At the end, it's a doctor the one that takes the decision, but uh, you can let the AI know all the problems and 
taking all the databases and uh, its previous knowledge, it can say, OK, maybe try this, this or this. Then there is a doctor that will take the decision, but it can uh, provide you some counsel, no? so some support. Uh, for improving uh, predictive analytics, for example, it can let you know, mm, for example, uh, this machine is going to probably break the next week or the in, in the next two weeks, for example, in your factory. So you should take an action. So it will let you know beforehand uh, what's going to happen so you can take an action here. No? It will support you with this. And then provide uh, that data driven insights. Uh, sometimes you just have a lot of data, you just try and you are just trying to, to understand it, what's related to what, some see some correlation, see anything in the in the data. So AI there can also support you to let you know all these correlations that for humans sometimes it's difficult to get, but for AI it's much simpler. So it can also uh, work here. Some of the benefits that you can use by, by implementing uh, AI in decision making. It increases efficiency and productivity. At the end, you have an, an AI uh, that is being trained specifically for that. Uh, so it knows a lot. It doesn't know a lot about uh, anything else, no, but it knows a lot about this use case uh, in, in, in particular. So it can help you to be much, much more efficient and, and, and increase your productivity also. Uh, it will reduce cost and resources, uh, for example, also at, at the end, you have a machine that works really well for something, so it will reduce the, the cost of doing that, that task. Uh, you will probably uh, do better system uh, quality. No? It will increase your, your rate of accuracy, for example, to do this task. And it will enhance customer satisfaction at the end, because if we are faster, if we are much more efficient, our customer will probably be uh, much happier with, our, with the service that we provide. What are some of the challenges that we also see in, in decision making? So ensuring data quality and security, this is uh, really important. So uh, if the data is not uh, in a good, if it's not quality data, then the model will not be of good quality. So depending on what you input, the model will learn with that data. So if the data is bad, the model will probably be bad also. And the security, you know, at the end we are we are dealing with a lot of information, sometimes sensitive information from uh, our databases or our clients or, or something like this. So it's private data and it should be uh, it should be uh, very secure. Managing the implementation cost, uh, this can also be a problem. So depending on what you want to do, you say, okay, I'm going to um, to buy this uh, spot on the cloud of Amazon or Azure or um, Google. And I'm going to implement an algorithm and then you see charges everywhere. So this can be a problem also. Uh, so it's something to, to keep in mind no? when you are building an AI system. What's it going to do? What does it need to create something that uh, doesn't increase the cost uh, way much more than, 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 than you want it? Uh, ethical concerns, for example, we are going to talk more about that later, but uh, ethics are here are really important. We're, we have seen a lot of problems with ethics and AI, for example, AI being uh, racist, for example, or AI behaving um, 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 having discrimination as a woman, for example, it also happened. But the problem here is not the AI, it's the data that you feed the AI. So Amazon, for example, have a problem um, years back no, they wanted to implement a, a system to um, to hire uh, to hire someone. So they build an AI based on that. Uh, the problem is that there were much more men than women when uh, when they fed the data. So its decision that the algorithm take uh, it took was uh, was most of the times hiring a man instead of a woman. This is not because the AI was um, uh, was um, discrimination. This was because the data at the beginning was much more higher for men than women. So the AI at the end just repeated the pattern, repeated the pattern, repeated the pattern, and that created a problem later. So we need to be very careful with the data that we input the, the, the model because it learns the patterns. And if the patterns are not right, no, then we have a problem afterward because the model will just repeat itself. And well, navigating uh, re regulatory requirements, especially now that we've been and in, uh, th there's been an increase in in, in, in regulations, uh, so that's also <laughs> really important when you are building a, a model. Sorry if I'm going uh, fast. Uh, let me know if I'm going too fast, and I will uh, slow down a bit. But uh, sometimes I just <laughs> start talking, and I don't. Uh, uh, Sarah, no. 
Uh, now let's see a few examples in different industries about how you can implement it, implement AI. No, at the end you can implement AI in most businesses. So these are just a few examples that you can see in some place that you might not think that AI can help, but it can really help in uh, in in a lot of different industries. So for example, in furniture industry, uh, if we have the goal to improve demand forecasting and inventory management, uh, because uh, for example, a few years, uh, well, maybe last year or the years before that, we have a problem, we had a really huge problem no? with uh, with demand and, and forecasting. We, we, for example, order a, a sofa and it took uh, six months to, to be at home because uh, there was a problem in, in all the, a global problem with logistics, no? So AI can help you here to do a demand forecasting and inventory management, no? So you are much more efficient here. So you can use AI to predict future sales and then optimize the, the inventory levels here. Um, what would be the result? No, you would improve uh, sales, reduce inventory cost at the end because you know much well, you know better than uh, what are you going to need for this week and for the next week and for the next month. So it's a um, much more um, efficient way to, to keep track of your inventory. Um, what can other examples uh, that we can see? No, for example, we can use AI for design optimization. Uh, there are a lot of AIs now that are popping up uh, that can, by drawing a picture, it can create you um, a, a 2D uh, model of what you are building. And then there are AIs that can do the same, but for 3D. So you can just draw something, uh, use an AI, and it will create a 3D model of that uh, picture that you made. So uh, AI here is also um, rapidly growing and, and it's also something that uh, that you can do. Uh, supply chain management, for example, it's uh, well a bit extended of what we just discussed. No? Here it can help us uh, with the supplier selection, uh, with order man management and with the logistic optimization of all our uh, industry. In construction, for example, here is some other example that is not so so common. No, so for example, if we want to enhance our project management and risk assessment, we can use AI to optimize the the project scheduling. For example, here uh, the resource allocation of our um, of our workers and uh, trying to make an estimate of the progress of, of of the of the progress that we are making. No, and if we are uh, doing it in line with. Um, with what we said at the beginning, or if there have been delays and why the delays um, are happening and all that. No, AI can help us here. The results at the end would be uh, project timelines much uh, well constructed. No, we would reduce cost here because if we are seeing uh, if AI, if the AI model is telling us, okay, you might have a problem next week or in two weeks. Uh, here we can we can also if we are aware of the of the problem we can take action uh, faster and, and sooner. No? Other examples here that we can see you now in this industry, for example, risk assessments, uh, applying uh, machine learning you know, to identify potential risk and cost estimation. Uh, we can predict much more accurately uh, the cost of something based on past interaction and also uh, open data that we can find from different industries uh, and global markets and, and all that. For home automation, for example, we, we discussed this a little bit before, but uh, for optimizing the energy consumption and, and enhance the, the, the user experience, uh, we can also use AI here. So we can, if it understands the patterns that we do at home, it can do, as we said, no, it will just turn on the heater 30 minutes before we arrive. It will automatically uh, turn off the heater when it knows that we've gone to bed. And all that with all these little things, we will be saving a uh, Little by little, no, but at the end we are optimizing our consumption, and this is also something uh, nice for <laughs> for everyone. So this is another example of where we can use AI. Others could be, for example, security. Uh, we can use AI to 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 make surveillance of our of our house. We have cameras, for example, outside, and if it detects movement, uh, it will just uh, let us know that there's movement on the door, for example. Or for per personalization, no, for example, for customizing uh, the experience in our house. Uh, maybe if we have a system that knows other houses, you know, for example, it can let us know a few things. You no know, other users are using uh, this type of uh, of lights, for example, at this time, or they are using uh, this product in their house, or they are using this other thing. Uh, we can also customize the, the experience of our users in, in our house. For sustainability, that's this is also uh, this is having a huge impact already, and, and it's been used in, in in the industry for for quite a, a long time now. Uh, for example, for improving resource uh, utilization and waste, man waste management here, 
we can use AI to minimize uh, waste. Uh, we can optimize the, um, the waste reduction and use models for sorting and recycling, for, uh, for example. So big plants can know uh, by using computer vision algorithms uh, what is going through our factory and saying, okay, this is plastic, uh, this is uh, glass, this is this type of plastic, this is this type of thing, no? And detecting it with AI is uh, is way faster and much more accurately. So we can divide it better, for example, when we are doing uh, all this um, management of the of the of the waste. Uh, and for emission uh, reduction, for example, we can also use AI to monitor the emissions, uh, do a forecasting, and try to to create strategies to, for for reducing this. Uh, in the welfare and health uh, technology, uh, it's also been used, no? as I said before, uh, there are some pilots working now with some hospitals trying to do, um, to, to use uh, ChatGPT-like uh, models to, to help doctors uh, uh, with their patients, for example. Uh, in psychology, for example, it's, uh, there, there are also some, some AI models that are using, uh, that are being used for interacting with them, like there were, that, like, they can try to help you uh, processing things or uh, with some problem that you might have. I mean, it's not a psychologist, but it can help you here. Uh, some models are, are good at this, so they're also being implemented here. Uh, for um, um, medical devices and for building new treatments, it's also been being used, AI, here uh, in the pharmaceutical industry and, and other industries. Uh, so it can really be uh, a huge impact here in the health uh, technology. It can be used, for example, for monitoring health, like, for example, we do when we have a, a, an Apple Watch or another watch that can read our um, heart rhythm. It can detect uh, things because it, it knows at the end the, the right pattern of the heart. So if you have an anomaly, it will detect the anomaly and then it will let you know sooner that something is going on. If we implement more things, like, for example, a temperature and different things of the of the body that we can measure, for example, with the maybe with the sweat, we can measure uh, the sugar in the blood or something like that. We can create systems that are really good at predicting what's going to happen and help us a lot here in in this field. There are also in development, for example, in uh, for Alzheimer treatments and for Alzheimer uh, discovery here in, in in AI. So I think in in medicine and welfare in particular, it will be it will have a huge impact. It's already impacting. Uh, in a very good, uh, positive way, no, but uh, I think it's it's going to to have an an increase here. Um, now let's see uh, some other practical uses. No, I mean we've seen what we can do, but really, how how can I implement this in my own um, in my own company? No, uh, first we need to identify the AI opportunities in the business. So we've seen a lot of examples. Those words for you to. Just see, okay, what can I do in my business? Uh, all these businesses are, are using AI for these things, so maybe I can use it for this uh, use case. So that's the first part. Identify what can AI help me with. Then you should try to build a culture around uh, data driven. This is very important because without data, AI is nothing. So you need data to be able to create uh, models. So uh, storing the data and having good quality data is really important for, for models. So having everything measured, having metrics everywhere, that's really important. I mean, for every business is important, no? But uh, for building machine learning models is really, really important. Then uh, what can you, you do here? If you have in-house expertise, you can develop it yourself, no? Or you can create a team that, uh, to do this. There are, um, it's, it's they know there are more companies uh, popping up that can help you do this in an easy, easier way. There are some companies that abstract you a lot from the uh, machine learning and, and artificial intelligence model. Uh, they do most of the work. Uh, you still need to provide the data and all that, but they can do most of the training and deployment and all that. So uh, it's easy to, to, to work with. And um, some of them are also web-based, so you don't really need to do much a lot of things uh, those are the the list no, of use cases uh, most of the use cases uh, you will probably need someone on your company to do all these models or someone outside a partner that can help you build all these uh, ai services no it depends on the use case some are easier some are harder but uh, these are uh, options that, that you may have and then ev evaluate ai solutions so um, maybe I, w I have ident identified these problems, uh, but mm, this use case has been 
uh, I don't know, there are a lot of examples of this one. So maybe I focus on this one because it's already been solved in the industry. And then I will work through the others uh, to try to make much more efficient my 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 field. No, this is like a few a view of a, a quick view of this. Um, this is the do it yourself. No, uh, it's quite long. Sorry for the text, uh, but uh, but I couldn't summarize it more. Sorry. <laughs> so here, for example, it is is the same thing. Understanding AI. No, at the end, um, you need to to acquire some uh, fundamental understanding of AI. Uh, to know all these type of, of different models that you can be used to then identify AI opportunities that you can have inside your uh, inside your company and then say, okay, this uh, is a problem that can be tackled with computer vision. This is a problem that can be tackled with natural language processing. Uh, this can be this is generic. This is, for example, just a fraud detection. So it's just a true or false thing. So this is easier, for example. So it depends on the use case. Uh, you need to identify which model would be best. No. After that, you should select the right AI tool. No. As I said, there are uh, already good tools online that you can find. Uh, the open source community is huge. So there are there is a lot of information out, uh, out there uh, if you want to develop the models yourself. Uh, so there is a lot out there. So you you should also uh, check that out. That the, the problem that you're having. Most of the times, that problem already happened to someone. For example, here, ChatGPT can help you a lot, and, and all these uh, AI models. You let it know your problem and mm, let it uh, give you some solutions, and then you can go your you can work your 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 problem through that. No, uh, with this uh, little help that ChatGPT or being Chat or any other uh, Chat can can let you know. Those chats are the, the, the knowledge they have is until 2021, so they are not uh, up to date completely, but they are having interrogations with online, so they can might they might help you there. Then there is a part of the data collection and preparation. No, as I said, data is uh, very important here with with uh, with AI models, and you need to establish a process to collecting all this data, cleaning the data, managing all the data that you are storing. Uh, to have high quality of this data. No? At the end, it's, it's what we said. If we are building a model with uh, bad data, the model is is not going to be good. It depends a lot on, on the thing you input. Then with that, uh, it will give you a solution. So if, if the data is bad, the model will will be bad, probably. Uh, after that, what, what can you do? A pilot testing. Uh, I wouldn't go for a huge solution or a big project or something like that. I like always to start um, a small. Have a little pilot. Have a have a have a um, um, some a small project to to see if it's viable or not the the problem. And after we've seen that it can be it, that it works well and it can be done properly, then we extend and make a bigger project. Okay, so you must you first make a, a small pilot and then you uh, you train the model further. Uh, you deploy the model uh, with uh, a bigger project and then you can work on that. And after that, it's just a case of continuous evaluation and adaptation. So models sometimes uh, get old really fast, maybe six months, one year, something like that. The data has changed, the pattern has changed, and you need to um, retrain the model. So this is something also important to keep in mind because you don't just build a model today and that model will work forever. Uh, you will probably have to retrain the model in six months or in one year for the model to be updated. No? And something really important here uh, uh, is that AI at the end is a tool. It's a tool for decision making. It will not replace human uh, intuition no, and expertise. We will have to have some human after that to make the final decision, no? but it can help us a lot and support us a lot in taking informed decisions. No? It will not let us know. It, we will not follow it blindly. It will let us know something. And then we as humans need to take control and take the final decision. This is uh, very important because living all the work for AI, it's not uh, something good. Um, now let's go to the final part, the part of ethics and legal aspects here. Um, where are some ethical considerations no, here? Uh, well, we already talked about uh, this, uh, data pri privacy. Ensuring the data protection of the user and compliance with the relation is really important. So if we are using, uh, if we have some data that we don't know if we can use because it's data from our customers, and we don't have something signed with them, a contract that they let us use their data. 
we probably cannot use the, uh, that data. If it's internal data from our company, uh, we, we probably can. That's that's something to keep in mind, no? the privacy of the data, and if it's data that we can use to train our models or not. Fairness, so AI, as we said, no, it can, it, it's, um, it can have bias uh, depending on the data that we feed the model. So if we are feeding something really unbalanced, uh, uh, for example, uh, the, the Amazon example, not where we are putting 90% uh, for example of our hires are men and 10% are women, the model will keep repeating that pattern and it will keep hiring 90% of men, 10% of women, or even, probably even higher percentage of, of, of men because it, it, it will just uh, predict one, one, one case and forget about the other. So it is something to, to have in mind, no? the fairness of the, of the models. Transparency, making AI algorithms understandable. This is really important. Uh, for example, the European Union has uh, now, I don't know if last year or this year, uh, they, they are building a, um, a, a group focused on uh, algorithm transparency in social media. So those algorithms sometimes are just black boxes. Uh, we don't know how they work. Uh, why are they um, sharing something with me and not with you? Why are they doing this or this other thing? So uh, transparency is going to be much more important from now onward. So it's very important to understand what the model uh, is focusing on when it's making a prediction. If we are, for example, uh, with the fraud detection algorithm, for example, for a, uh, for a company, we are trying to detect fraud uh, and it let us know that these, for example, this purchase has a um, 90% probability of um, being fraud. Um, how can we know why it's fraudulent that that uh, that that purchase? We cannot know if the model is not uh, transparent with us. If we don't have explainability about the model, it's very difficult to know. So models cannot be black boxes. It, they should uh, give some light about what they are looking for and the patterns they 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 see. And about uh, legal aspects and regulatory aspects. So. AU uh, General Data Protection Regulation, no? the, the GDPR, um, is, is in place, uh, I think, everywhere in, in Europe now. And it's a strong regulation about what we can do with data and we cannot, uh, what we cannot do with data. No? So this is very important uh, to know also when we are using it. For example, if I have a data that is from my customers um, and it's private data and they have given me permission, for example, for, for using it for models, uh, for some type of model that I'm building, um, and then I decide to share that data with some partner that I have in the in the US outside the European Union, uh, that probably I cannot do. So the data migration and where data goes is also important. So these are things that to, to keep in mind when you are training uh, a model and where you want to build a, a system. No? That's why there are some uh, data protection officers that can help us with all, with all this. And AI specific regulation, at the end, um, we have European regulation, but each country do different things. For example, with ChatGPT, we saw that uh, Italy uh, forbid the use of, of ChatGPT until they change the, uh, the the privacy that they offer on the on the tool. So it limits the use of that, but it didn't happen in the rest of, the, of of Europe. So each country can be different. So this is something to keep in mind when you are building a model, uh, depending on where you can use it or or not. And well, it's uh, Time and I think uh, it's time for the for the Q and A. Just uh, 15 past one. So uh, let us know if you have any 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 questions here, and, and let's go to the to the Q and A and the conclusion for this webinar. I hope I didn't bore you too much. And uh, Nana, please. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aita, for the presentation. Actually, there was already a question in the chat uh, oh. from David Cortez, and I think it was for slide 20. Uh, he is asking what type of studies does those might need to have someone in-house? Uh, I don't know if... Yeah, uh, so it depends on the problem that you have. Uh, I would start with a uh, um, data scientist. If you already have in-house developers, for example, they can probably uh, do a good job uh, transitioning from software development to machine learning, well, to, to data scientists, and they can start working with data easily. If you don't have uh, that in-house, uh, I would recommend learning some Python, uh, the, the, the programming uh, language. There are some interesting tools uh, like Kaggle, for example, it's a key A-G-G-L-E. Um, uh,